my fellow Jamaicans, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. I'm born in the UK of Jamaican parents, and that is why sometimes I have an interest in what's happening in Jamaica, and I share it with whoever crosses my channel. I also um, talk about things that are happening in the UK, because I was born here, and also things that happen in USA, because I spent 11 years there, and that's how I roll. So today, um, well, to be honest, I did a video about the flu shot yesterday in Jamaica. Totally got it wrong. I had to take it down. I thought, what's his name? Um, Honourable, Right Honourable Christopher Tufton, who's the health minister in Jamaica. I thought he was talking about the flu shot in Jamaica. I think that was a part of me being half, half of my mindset in England, half of my mindset in Jamaica. Because when I think about the flu, immediately I think, oh, they're trying to um, promote the flu shot. And that's what I thought. But what he was saying was actually protecting, he was encouraging people to protect themselves against the flu. And that's why I made that relationship. So sorry about that. I had to take it down because it was incorrect. So what the deal is now is that what he is saying is that the Jamaican residents need to protect themselves against the flu. Um, I'm not quite sure if that is because, like I said, you've got 4.5 tourists coming in, came in this year, and you don't know what they're coming in with. You know, they all come in, you know, they're coming for a holiday because they don't want to waste their money. Whether they've got the flu or not, they're still jumping on that plane, providing they've got insurance, and most of them usually have, and they bring their germs with them. And once they start holding onto that suitcase, you know, or once they start holding onto the mobile phone, and then you take the mobile phone or you help them with their suitcase, you can catch it. It doesn't take much. So it's just about being extra vigilant and being wary of people who are sniffling and, who are, you know, who are coughing into handkerchiefs and who are sniveling and, you know, sneezing around you. It's just about being careful um, about that. Like I said, in the UK, they, they do have the flu shot here where they inject you with um, unactivated the unactivated virus they actually inject you with a flu virus and um, that's supposed to build up your immunity you I used to have it I used to have it every year and up till about maybe four or five years ago and when I was having it I wasn't getting the flu and then I thought you know what I don't think I really need it so I stopped taking it I stopped taking it for about three years and then one year I decided to take it and I was as sick as a dog for about six weeks so I haven't taken it since so I have taken it for about three years um, I find that people who take the flu shot some of them have the flu some of them don't have the flu some of them are still off for weeks some of them are not off um, it's not they're not ill enough to take time off work. So it's really an individual choice. So back to my people in, in Jamaica. Um, yeah, must be vigilant um, about the flu. It's the, the, Apparently the symptoms are very similar to dengue fever. So you could get the two confused. But just remember you've got a whole heap of people coming into your island. You don't know what they're coming in with. A lot of them are looking for our black men. And, you know, some of them black men, because they're doing a little hustle, you know, they did a kiss up with them and doing all, so all sorts with them, you know, and then they know they're going to get a little um, money for it. Sometimes it's not worth your health. You don't know what these people have. Always make sure. I mean, I'm going away from the point, but if you are having sexual relationships with these tourist women, these these women who come over here looking for black men, make sure you always protect yourself. Always. If you see them sniffling and snorkeling, regardless of how they minimise what they have, don't go near them. You don't know what kind of germs they're carrying. Anyway, let me just tell you a bit of how you can get the flu. Um, viruses spread through tiny droplets in the air that are released when a sick person sneezes, coughs or blows their nose. Some people, they can get on the plane as right as rain. 
They don't even have a sniffle. But eight hours confined in that space, no air. I mean, you can turn that little thing to make some kind of ventilation. I don't know what happens. But you've got all those germs regurgitating in the aircraft between eight and 12 hours. And you don't know what you're inhaling. So when you're getting off of that plane, you don't know what you're carrying into the island that you're going to or the country. So you can get sick if you touch your nose, eyes or mouth after you've touched something contaminated by the virus, such as suitcases, cameras, phones or even doorknobs. Remember, people go to the toilet when they have a, when they have a, a cold you know, I know they wipe their ass and probably wash their hands, but you just don't know. They might just go, you know what I mean, touch the doorknob. You happen to touch the doorknob. You don't know. It's very easy to catch the flu virus. And apparently viruses can live on those objects for up to two days. So after them left and gone, you know, you can still go and touch whatever it is. And like I said, you could be helping them with their suitcases. You don't know what they have. So make sure that when you go to help somebody, make sure they look healthy. And even if they don't, even if they do look healthy, make sure you take the precautions you need to take. Um, if you come in contact with cold or flu germs, your chance of getting sick isn't 100%. It depends on whether the other person was infected and how many viral particles are contained in the droplets and, of course, their state of health. It also depends on your state of health as well. You know, if you've got a good, resilient body, healthy body, you might be able to be a bit resilient to catching um the flu virus. People are most contagious between the first two to three days of the cold and the cold is often not contagious after the first week. The thing is is that people who are contagious between the first two and three days they don't even know that they've got the flu and then after they do get the symptoms that's when they're not contagious. So you could have met them when they're in that incubation stage, they call it, you know, those first two or three days, they're not really showing any symptoms. And then you did a kiss them up and doing all sorts. And the next thing you know, you catch some. So people who have the flu may pass it on to others one day before the symptoms start. That's what I was saying. One day before, if they've got it between two and three days, you know, and by the time you see them, they, they're not showing any symptoms. You could still get it. And it starts up until five to seven days after getting sick. So they may spread the flu before they even know they're sick. That's what I mean. So just be careful, peeps. Like, be vigilant. Watch, learn, observe. Don't respond too quickly. Remember, these people, they're very, very scrupulous. They're depending on your need. They're depending on your greed. They're depending on your vulnerability. They're depending on a lot of factors. When they decide to come to Jamaica, you know, they're not just coming for a holiday. They already have a plan in mind. So just make sure that you are on the alert. You're looking ahead. And you're, you've already got those, you know, instead of responding to these people, as soon as you see them, watch and observe. Don't react. Just wait a little bit. Count one, two, three, and see what, what they're up to. See how they look. See if they're looking too eager. See if they're skinning up their teeth too quick. And just be careful. Okay, and that's all for now. Bye-bye.